The war in Ukraine is the largest in Europe since World War II. However, this modern battlefield differs significantly from all wars before. Even snipers who have always been among the most mythical figures on the battlefield have to adapt. It's a profession that is romanticized by many but mastered by few. I want to show how sniper duos operate on today's battlefield and to do so, I've joined the Bravo 2 unit. It is 5 am and we are heading on a sniper's mission. Yesterday we went on a reconnaissance. Early dawn is the perfect time to sleep into the battle zone. During this time both daytime and night vision drones struggle with optics. Our drive is safe, but not so soft. Today we are with the sniper's team on a reconnaissance day, so they took us with them to go to the further positions to check if uh, there's a possibility for their work tomorrow. I'll tell you right away so you can make a decision. The position there was severely damaged by the enemy with FPV drones yesterday. A man was killed there and another one wounded. It's foggy now. We just want to go in and see what's going on there. Okay. Notice that the unit doesn't have sniper rifles today. If the enemy spots a group with sniping equipment, all available firepower will head our way. For this very reason, the unit avoids working from existing positions and trenches to avoid drawing attention to the infantry. Those tree lines you see are already enemy controlled. That's why we move slowly. When we move fast, they see us, okay? The role of snipers has evolved with the arrival of drone warfare. Suicide drones, particularly FPV ones, are flooding the battlefield. As mentioned before, yesterday a man was killed by an FPV drone in this very trench. But we've come prepared. This is a secret development of the US. I'm kidding, it's a Ukrainian creation. It's a trench electronic warfare device that helps jam the FPVs. We hear an FPV drone from about 500 meters away. It has a characteristic sound. It's different from a Mavic. We turn it on, and if we're lucky, the drone falls down. We must advance to reach an optimal shooting distance. The further we go, the line of trees boldens like an old man's head, exposing us more and more. Luckily, today we're covered in the morning fog. Given these challenges, finding a proper position for sniping may take days. But today's task was a success. We've never been at these positions before. Our main task is to investigate and establish a connection between friendly units, to understand what's going on. Now, in principle, we know where to choose potential positions, where to hide, where to approach. So today I've learned that, that uh, sniper's work is not as pretty as it seems to be in the movies. It involves uh, lots of uh, preparation, waiting, listening, uh, lots of risk, of course, and uh, kilometers of walking in this uh, crazy mud. As my best partner says, the feet feed the hunter. Yesterday we went on a reconnaissance. Today it's time for real work. Same old road, and by now we know the biggest holes and bumps. This time, the loaded pirate rifles travel with us. A combat medic accompanies us, just in case. We will prepare our position and then come back to wait for the right time. Uh -huh. And then we'll work. 
while we wait for the morning fog to clear, we have some time to kill. I ask the guys how they stay motivated after over 20 months of fighting. I realize that this is going to be a long war. I have decided that I will be here till the very end, until we win or lose. There's psychological stress, but I gave my word. I believe that I have the moral strength, spirit and determination to devote myself and defend Ukraine. No matter what it takes. As anticipated, the shooting part is swift. Visual contact confirmed, two shots and we're out. If these days have shown us one thing, it is that sniping is an art form, and to do it right, it takes what few have. A combination of strength, will, and most importantly, patience.